electromagnetic induction is described by Faraday's law. Faraday's law says that E equals minus d phi B by dt, where E is the induced EMF, phi B is the magnetic flux, and T is the time. Notice the presence of the negative sign, which comes from Linz's law that we will talk about. To make things simple, we will replace d phi b by dt with delta phi b by d delta t. So there are two things that we will talk about from this equation. The first of which is the electromagnetic induction and the effect of the change in the magnetic flux on the induced EMF. The second thing will be Lenz's law and the reason why there is a negative sign in this equation. Notice that in order to get an induced EMF, the magnetic flux has to change over time. The magnetic flux is defined as the integral of B dot dA. Suppose you have a conducting loop of area A. And let's say that we have a uniform magnetic field directly directed in an angle theta with the perpendicular to the plane of the loop. The magnetic field in this case has a constant magnitude and direction because it is uniform. So the integral reduces to B times A times cosine theta. So to change the flux, the magnetic flux, we have to change B, which is the magnetic field, A, the cross-section area of the loop, or theta, the angle between the magnetic field and the perpendicular to the area. Or you can do this by changing a combination of the three. Take a look at delta t in the equation. If delta t is large, this means that the change in the magnetic flux is taking place slowly, so the induced EMF will be small. If delta t is small, however, this means that the change is taking place quickly and thus you get a large induced EMF and a large induced current. Lenz's law says that a change in the magnetic flux induces an EMF and the current, of course, if you have a closed loop. The direction of the induced current is such that the magnetic field of this induced current opposes the change that caused it. Let's say this again. The direction of the induced current is such that its magnetic field opposes the change that caused it. To understand Linz's law, let's take a look at this example. Suppose you have a, a magnetic field directed to the right. If this magnetic field increases, we know that there will be an induced EMF and induced current in the conducting loop. Now the direction of the induced current is such that its magnetic field opposes the change. In this case, the magnetic field increased to the right, so the induced current should have a magnetic field directed to the left. And if the magnetic field of the induced current is directed to the left, you can use your right-hand rule to prove that the induced current should be in this direction. 
if the magnetic field no longer changes, the induced current will drop to zero. If this magnetic field decreases, then the magnetic field of the induced current should be to the right. It tries to increase it. In order for this to happen, and again, by using the right hand rule, the induced current should be in this direction. A quick review of uh, Lenz's law. Notice uh, how the galvanometer displays a change in the current when I move the magnet toward or away from the coil. Let's discuss what happens when I move the north pole of the magnet toward the coil. Now the magnetic field is directed out of the north. So when I move the north pole of the magnet toward the coil, the magnet will notice or, or will feel that the magnetic field in this direction is increasing. Okay, because again, I'm moving the north pole toward the coil. So the magnetic field increases over the area of the coil. The coil will respond by inducing a current. The magnetic field of the induced current should be in the opposite direction, which is out of the coil. Okay, if the induced current or has a magnetic field out of the coil, this means that the induced current should be in this direction, which is the counterclockwise direction. And if the current flows in the counterclockwise direction, look at the simple diagram here. Counterclockwise means that it's coming out of the positive and into the negative of the galvanometer. So since the current flows into the negative, out of the positive, the galvanometer will show a negative deflection. So let's see again. Moving, increasing the magnetic field over the area of the coil. The coil responds by generating a counterclockwise current whose magnetic field is opposite to the change. This front terminal is connected to the positive side of the ammeter and the rear one is connected to the negative side exactly as shown in the picture in the lab manual. Now, uh, for this step, I'm going to move the north pole of the magnet. The magnet has the north pole, which is the red, and the south, which is the blue. So I'm going to move the north pole toward the coil and observe what happens on the galvanometer. Okay, now with the, north pole, with the magnet sitting inside the uh, coil without any movement, notice what the galvanometer is reading. And when I pull it away, notice what happens. Now let's repeat the same thing, but for using the south pole of the magnet. So I'm going to move it toward the coil, leave it, keep it at rest, and then pull it away from the coil. Right? So we have replaced the galvanometer with the current sensor as instructed in the lab manual. So the front is connected to the positive and the rear is connected to the negative. The magnetic field sensor is placed inside the coil with the probe to pointing towards me. All right. And it is set to the axial mode. So it measures only the magnetic field that goes in this direction. All right, so let's arrange the setup. Let's uh, start by moving the north pole toward the magnet and then pull it away from the magnet. Now let's discuss what happens in this graph, All right? Let me rescale, uh, put them vertically at least. Notice that they should have the same horizontal scale in order to be able to tell what's going on. So here, this is when I moved the magnet toward the coil. Notice how the magnetic field is increased in the positive direction because it's measuring any magnetic field into the the uh, axis of the uh, sensor as a positive quantity. So the magnetic field in increased in value to a given value. This is when I moved it and then stopped here, okay? See how I stopped for a moment 
and then I pulled the magnet away. Now on the other hand, notice what happens current-wise. This is the reading of the current sensor. When we move the magnet toward the coil, what happened is that we got a negative current induced in the coil. All right, this is the induced current caused by the change in the magnetic flux. When I pull, pulled the magnet away, the magnetic field changed from a maximum value to back to zero or very close to zero. That's why you got another induced current, okay? So notice how the induced current only occurs when there is change in the magnetic field. So uh, let me uh, just to let you see it clearly here. I will align the two graphs together. Okay. Here, the magnetic field changed from a small value to a positive value, large value. So there is a change in the magnetic flux. That's why we got induced current in the negative direction. The magnetic field changed from the maximum value down to a very small value. So there is a change in the magnetic flux and we got a positive induced current because it decreased in value. And then I'm going to start recording. Now I'm going to move the, the, the north pole of the magnet toward the coil, okay? and observe what happens here and then keep it steady for a moment and then pull it away all right let's repeat the same thing with the south pole again move toward the coil keep it steady and then move away from the coil and observe what happens here all right In this part of the experiment, instead of the uh, normal magnet as a source of magnetic field, now we have this coil which will act as an electromagnet. So this coil is connected to source uh, one of the power supply. Okay, So we're going to place it in front of the coil. Now this is the same coil that we used before and it is still connected to the current sensor. The magnetic field sensor is also inside the coil. Now this magnetic field sensor will measure how the magnetic field coming from the electromagnet is changing and the current sensor will measure or show you the response of the coil to this change in the magnetic field okay so it's going to show you the induced current so again magnetic field sensor will show how the electric how the magnetic field changes over the coil the current sensor will show you the response which is the induced current 